Hello and welcome to the Redline Solutions webinar. I'd like to give a big thank you for everybody joining us on YouTube today. The session is how do you efficiently manage devices now you have a mobile workforce. We are very pleased to have Rob Norby and John Jerger from Zebra Technologies. And we thank both John and Rob and Zebra Technologies for their assistance in putting together this presentation. So first, a little bit about Redline Solutions. Redline was established in 1997. We have our headquarters in Santa Clara, California. We're a leading system integrator with extensive knowledge in barcode, voice, vision, RFID, data capture and identification systems. We work closely with our clients to develop the most suitable, cost-effective solutions for their needs and have a variety of support and service options to keep those systems running smoothly. We specialize in warehouse management, inventory control, asset tracking, healthcare, and product labeling systems. Our in-house development team have created a suite of SaaS and server-based inventory and traceability solutions that are implemented across the US and Canada. We work with many types of customers from Fortune 500 to startups. And though we partner with many vendors, we're extremely proud to be a Zebra Premier Business Partner. So without further ado, I will pass this over to Rob. When we talk about enabling you know, the device management, why is it important? You know, why is this something that you should be thinking about from an organizational standpoint? And what we really come down to, what we look at it from a Zebra perspective is that we want to be able to give assets the ability to talk, right? Physically and virtually, right? And with that communication, you're going to then be able to gain meaningful data, which is going to allow you as the IT manager, the operations manager, whatever role you, you, you have, if you're on this call, it means that you are responsible for managing and keeping track of some of the mission critical supply chain devices in your environment. It allows you to make smarter decisions based on that meaningful data, based on the fact that we're allowing these assets to talk. So what we do at Zebra, um, is we give assets the digital voice, create real-time analytics, and that, again, leads to smarter decisions within the enterprise. Uh, we do that through a number of platforms. Uh, today we're going to talk about LinkOS, AVS, and OVS. Uh, but we also have other options that we can follow up on, if you have questions about specifically. Uh, we, have, uh, we are dipping our toe into the IoT pond uh, with the TAR, which is a development platform. Uh, we also have a retail focus. Uh, Zebra Commerce solution, which allows for real-time tracking of inventory. Uh, it's an active RFID solution, um, and again, it, it, it's a lot more extensive than what we're going to talk about today, but we like to introduce those ideas so that it can start to kind of get that uh, thought process going on your end. And then on top of that, if, if any of you saw the news a couple years ago, um, MotionWorks is a, is a brand of ours that we work with the NFL. So if you watch the Thursday NFL games, uh, and you see the blue and green lines that they put behind the players. You're starting to see some advanced statistics on what these players are doing uh, in the second quarter versus third quarter, 40 time, et cetera. That's coming from an RFID chip that we put in their shoulder pads. So again, we're not going to get into all that today, but it's good to let everyone know that that's what we do at Zebra is we're allowing assets, whether an asset is a, an actual mm -hmm. football player, right, or more realistically, a mobile computer, um, we're allowing those assets to have a digital voice, a physical voice, and that's going to allow the infrastructure team uh, to be able to make smarter decisions. So today, like I said, I'm going to dive into Link OS and Profile Manager. Um, so before we dive in specifically to Profile Manager and Cloud Connect, those are the, the two I'm going to kind of share more detail on, I want to spend a second talking about what Link OS is for our printers. So in the past, um, thermal printers, thermal and direct thermal transfer and direct thermal printers, uh, have been relegated to work on a, on a separate network, separate firmware. That's not just us, that's our competitors out there as well. Um, they were harder to manage, they were harder to integrate. So what we did is we developed a concept to say, let's put an operating system on these printers instead of building a clunky firmware that's really heavy footprint and really hard to integrate. And let's treat this as if it's, if it's a computer, if you will. Let's give it the processing power and the integration capabilities that a computer does um, and so with that comes a lot of different feature sets. Um, only Profile Manager is, is chargeable, and I'll talk about what that looks like in a second here. Uh, but what it also comes with is a bunch of free modules. Like I said, I'm going to talk about Cloud Connect, but let's talk about virtual devices real quick. So if you have um, 
other manufactured printers in your environment, whether it's a Sato, a Datamax, a Cognex, what have you, and you wanted to move to Zebra, but you can't because you really don't want to take the time that it would require to change over the formats and the configurations and the printing language, we now can emulate um, other manufacturers' print language, and that's that's as quickly it's done as quickly as downloading uh, a firmware download on, on our website, sending the format to the printer, and then that can speak IPL if you have Intermax printer or DPL if you have Datamax, etc. Um, so it's a real quick way to uh, plug and play and be able to work with Zebra without having to change your entire environment. Um, we also have print touch. So if you have mobile devices that have near field communication NFC chip. Um, you can tap and pair. So that's a real quick way of managing the actual printer if your system or your network goes down and you still need to be able to print labels to get your shipping out for that day. If you had formats on your mobile device, which a lot of people do, you can then tap and pair and print directly via Bluetooth uh, without a network connection. So that's a quick way to um, ensure uptime and, and, and reduce the downtime in your printing environment. On top of that, we also have a powerful SDK. So if you were trying to print from iOS specifically, um, you can now leverage that development kit to write your own application, integrate it with your, with your ERP, with your WMS, whatever you're trying to feed and share data with. Um, you can do that through the SDK now, whether it's iOS or whether you want to do Android or Windows. Um, it, it, it speaks all those languages. So I wanted to take a second to touch on all of the different features that LinkOS comes with. And this just comes standard with our new printers, right? So it, talk to Redline if you're in the market for new printers and you want to make sure those printers are easily integratable with your uh, existing application, you're going to be able to do that through Link OS and Redline. So Cloud Connect, let's talk about Cloud Connect because again, you're going to see this discussion get gradually more granular on the features and the different tool sets um, that you can, that, that Zebra enables you to, to manage your devices with. Cloud Connect is that first step in that direction. So as we see, a lot of our customers these days have applications, whether it's WMS or an ERP. We see SAP and Oracle, for instance, in the cloud quite a bit. What Cloud Connect allows the user to do is essentially connect via secure encrypted wireless certificate. You can connect the printer to a cloud-based app. Um, what that allows you to do is identify and, and manage those printers through a cloud-based application. In the past, you weren't able to do that with us or other manufacturers and it's easier for IT to control and, and locate those printers uh, across multiple uh, LANs or WANs across multiple locations. Um, and, and it does, because our printers are coming with this cloud-based connect, uh, it has multi-port radio and customizable front panel uh, to, to enable the unique app. So um, what that looks like, a cloud connect use case, so item path, this is a case study we have out there. Um, it's a cloud-based asset tracking system. It enables the users to track items from any device. So again, we're starting to get into that conversation of not just how do you print from a cloud application, but how do you manage that application remotely, right? Truly device management. And, and the user using item path needed a reliable, secure cloud print solution. Uh, what were the needs? Easy users to set up, driverless printing from multiple OS platforms, direct secure connections through firewalls, uh, printer, printer status reporting. Again, we're getting into the conversation of device management. Um, and user customizable labels. So how do you manage the application as well remotely? Um, what's the solution? Is ZebraLink OS pre-configured to connect directly to the item path cloud platform? So nowadays I'm seeing a lot of applications where someone has uh, a mobile wireless uh, mobile computer um, and then a mobile printer and both of those things are connecting and sending data back and forth between a cloud application based in the cloud for lack of a better term. So. Um, and, and again, both of those devices, especially the printer, is going to be able to be recognizable on that network that wasn't the case before. So that is very simple device management. We're going to get into the more, like I said, the more granular type examples, but um, that kind of introduces you to where Zebra started and where we're headed um, from a remote management perspective. So we always like to pose this question, what if you could manage Manage from any device anywhere, right? Easily discover printers, find, fix, and resolve these issues, visually check printer statuses, and do this all via a web portal. What if you could do that, right? How, how easy would your life be from a printer management perspective? Well, the good news is you can, and you do that through Profile Manager, which is a tool that we've enabled through LinkOS. Um, like I mentioned, this is the only chargeable uh, feature of LinkOS. Most of LinkOS features come free with the printer. Um, profile Manager single user is 5,000 lists. 
obviously you'd work with with Redline on specific pricing. But the point is that it's not a it's not a whole arm and a leg type cost mentality. Um, and that's unlimited printers. So it's very inexpensive to get access to be able to manage groups individually, printers in, in groups, like I said, or individually. Um, and then you, if you wanted to go multi-user, we do have enterprise options as well. So um, what this allows you to do is manage your printers from anywhere, anytime via a browser. Uh, and it, the discovery allows you to easily find and manage the uh, LinguaS printers on your device, on your network, um, and then manage, like I said, those printers individually. If you wanted to group those by location, uh, by printer type, there's a lot of different options. It's very flexible to how you want to uh, enable it. So a quick screenshot, and then I'm going to get into the demo uh, portion and just kind of show you exactly some of the features that you can get in Profile Manager. But let's just go through these features uh, one by one so that you understand exactly what you're working with here. So uh, manages network link OS printers via the cloud, right? It's able to discover printers over the network. On-screen alert. So you see here, if there's a ribbon out, if there's a print head bad, right, it's going to give you that alert so you can be proactive in your management. Um, device view filtering, if you wanted to change the way it was grouped uh, per printer, per location, et cetera, you can do that. Editable profile. So if you have um, the same ribbon issue or the same print issue uh, or you're constantly trying to send configurations down to a specific printer, you can change the way that this that this profile per printer looks like so that you can get to the information you need to uh, quicker instead of having to sift through all the options that it comes with out of the box. Um, and then you can also convert fonts and graphics. So you can send these things via profile manager to the printer um, via this portal. Um, so provisioning is a very big feature that we see a lot from users loving profile manager is that you can, you can send down configurations um, or changes to the printer via this portal. Um, and then quick actions, right? Reset, calibrate. These are quick things as a troubleshooter. Everyone on this call has, has troubleshot out a printer before. A lot of times you reset the printer, you calibrate the printer, it ends up working, right? You can do that via this portal as well. A uh, single user sign on, or um, you can also do multi user, that would be the enterprise version. Um, but it's also a user, uh, you can set the password. So there is a, a, a good level of security in this so that not everyone can access it. Um, and then again, it uses the, the Link OS Cloud Connect feature. So the, the, there's a reason I started with the Cloud Connect because we're getting these printers up online and we're able to connect it to a cloud infrastructure. And because we're able to do that, now we're able to enhance what you're able to see within the printer. Um, and then browser access, so Chrome, IE, Firefox, whatever you have is going to work with that. And it is server-based. So um, this is the enterprise. Again, there's really not much difference other than multi-user sign-on. But that leads me to the actual uh, screen that I would like to show you, which is the, the demo. So, and again, this is available to anybody if you'd like to, to play around with this on, on your own. Um, right here you see five printers that are online in our Lincolnshire, Illinois uh, headquarters, our R&D department there. And so I'll kind of go through some of these, these features. Uh, the coolest thing is the odometer. You can see what's printed where. Um, but here you see five printers, right? Five of them are online. One of them is offline tells you that right away. So you can understand if someone's calling going, I can't send uh, a print job over the network for some reason, you can log into this portal and understand, oh, geez, OK, this one's offline. That's why you're not able to see it, because you're not able to see it. Um, and you can troubleshoot that remotely instead of sending somebody out there and then realizing the printer isn't online. And how much time would that have saved you? You can walk this guy through how to get it back up online or troubleshoot remotely. Um, some of the other features that are really cool. Uh, Move this real quick. Um, so you can see status online, offline, what printers have been added, what printers are showing error, uh, what printers are paused, right? You can also group this by model. So right now there's no grouping because there's only five printers in one location, but this could be location one. This could be location two, location three, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, and and so, yeah, so and then printer type, you can group it by mobile or industrial. Uh, also, thermal transfer, direct thermal. So there's a lot of ways to drill down into it so that you can save time kind of working around it. But then within this also, you can see the which print head widths are online, which, which ones we're working with as well. So right off the bat, it's going to give you some very important information to understand what's going on. But let's go ahead and dive into one of the profiles. Uh, I'm sorry, let's do this. So let's dive into one of these things. Um, and so this is the left ZT230. Uh, they named it that because I've seen this R&D room, and there's three of them. There's a left, there's a middle, there's a right. 
And so you get to name it, uh, you give it a location, the model, uh, the serial number. So you here you can also, I'm limited here because this is a demo, but you can change the IP address. If you wanted to change the MAC address, you could do this here as well. Um, if you wanted to update the firmware, you needed to see, okay, what firmware is running on this? A lot of times when we have technical issues, we recommend, hey, maybe you don't have the latest firmware. We do push out firmware updates uh, quite a bit, and you can do that through this uh, portal as well. Um, so let's dive into some of the things that you can do specifically on the printer. This is the coolest feature, in my opinion, the odometer. Uh, this allows you to be a lot, of, a lot more strategic uh, on what's being printed where. So if you keep having the same problems with the same printer, you can go in and go, okay, this one is printing 1,000 labels a day, and then the other one, the right DT230, is printing 500. Hmm, okay, let's maybe balance that workload a little bit. It also allows you to be more strategic with your ordering habits, right? If you know that, okay, we're, we're, we're averaging 1,500 labels a day through our entire printer fleet, um, let's start to order every month versus you can start to understand the mean and the way that the your printers are using uh, consuming labels, um, objects. Let's take a look into that. So. Uh, flash memory used, RAM used, both these, this printer has a ton of space to be able to send formats. Uh, that's a cool feature. Um, again, these are files that have been loaded on the printer as well. So you can start to say, okay, if they can't, we see a lot of times users um, print directly from the format on the printer. Well, here you can start to understand what is actually on that printer, um, and then you can download, send files, like I said, configurations remotely as well. Um, odometer is really cool. The settings, you can take a look at the base settings. So here you have the, the print width, 832, tear off. Can, you can change that as well. It, it, and again, the printer would have to be functional on these things, but you can change the tear off to the peel off to the rewind. Um, you can change the print method, thermal transfer to direct thermal. Um, so that you, can, you can play with the settings. You can change those remotely. You don't have to walk a guy who isn't a technical person maybe on the shop floor and, and they need to they need to take the ribbon out well you go okay no need to do that let me just change it to direct thermal um, you can do that all via here as well um, and then tags uh, that's not as important terminal you can understand where it actually is uh, in your network um, but then operation log is, is, is key as well now there hasn't been anything printed on this uh, this printer but in, in a normal uh, setting in your setting, you can understand what commands have been sent, uh, what's been sent back from the printer through this operation log. So you start to kind of get the idea that um, you're really getting a ton of information, which is going to be a lot, which is going to allow you to be a lot more intelligent uh, and to make smarter decisions. That's a, that's a phrase I used in the beginning of this session, uh, and it's kind of making sense uh, now. So um, networks, you can also go in to see what's been wired, what's wireless, where the connection is, if there's issues there. Provisioning, you can do remote provisioning, um, and then resources. Uh, again, this is—I mean, there's a, a lot of this, some of this is kind of repetitive, but you can store um, different fonts and graphics that you'd need to throw to the printer remotely. You can store that here as well. So that's that's Profile Manager, right? It, this is specific to Zebra printers, um, and this is for newer printers. Where we see this used quite a bit uh, is mobile printers, right? So it's not a shock that on this you have three mobile printers. We see it quite a bit, especially in, in field service, um, in produce where there's 15, 20 printers across a, a, a large location or 15, 20 printers across multiple locations. You need to understand what's going on. Um, you're going to be able to do this through here. So this leads us very well into what John's going to talk about, which is a much more broad services platform, and it's not just relegated to specific printers. But again, I thought this would be a good warm-up uh, to kind of let you know where it all started. And this was our first device management platform we came out with. Um, and Zebra, because we were, you know, originally just a printer company. So that'll lead me into um, what John's going to talk about. So Adrian, if you want to switch over the control, uh, that would be a good time now. Good, good. So I am just making John a panelist <coughs> and presenter. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Let me know if you can see my agenda here. Yep, we can, can see the agenda. It. Okay, very good. All right, well, thanks. Uh, thanks for in, uh, inviting me to participate in the, this panelist um, presentation. And uh, thanks, Rob, uh, for kicking it off. 
Um, so yeah, today I'm going to talk about um, our visibility services and kind of give you an overview of, of what we have uh, to offer when it comes to device visibility. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our managed uh, visibility services specifically, um, and then I'll go through a demo of our um, AVS or asset visibility services and our OVS, which is operational uh, visibility services, and take you through a little demo of those things. So let's see if I can do this. Okay. All right. So, uh, so what you're looking at here is basically our visibility services stack. Um, and if you start at the bottom, uh, the first level of visibility that we provide uh, is via our repair dashboards. And uh, these dashboards um, are available via via our Zebra One Care uh, support contracts and provide detail regarding. Um, repairs, uh, support tickets, um, and device volumes, basically. Um, from there, we move into our managed service products, um, and it starts at the bottom with our asset visibility, um, which provides you with visibility and predictability um, into your mobile devices. Um, and then we move up into our operational visibility services, which really there's two branches to that. There's our OVS Connect, um, which works with uh, the customer-owned uh, MDM that they may already have in place and our standard um, OVS service, which uh, works with uh, Zebra-included uh, uh, MDM. And then at the top of the heap, we have our Zebra One Care Premier service. Okay. So here's another view um, of our managed ser uh, visibility services. And starting um, at the base of our uh, pyramid and our entry into the managed services. Again, this is our asset visibility service or AVS and um, our AVS service uh, just rolled online this past May, uh, so it's a relatively new service uh, to Zebra and what's nice about this is it requires no MDM tool. Um, this is uh, due to the factory installed agent um, that comes on the device itself. Um, it is a scalable uh, device count, meaning there's no minimum quantity of devices that you need to utilize the service. Um, it is a low-touch service uh, and self-service, um, really, um, is how we intended this to be. Um, and what this really does is it replaces the manual asset tracking that um, so many customers use, you know, the spreadsheets that they have to pour through their devices and where things are. Um, you get a high-level view of device health and geolocation um, as well as device metrics. Um, and what's unique to the asset visibility service is it comes with a predictive insight. Um, and this is a user understandable um, predictive ratings of devices which provide actionable um, suggestions from which um, the big data analytics uh, gives you those suggestions uh, to make and take actions on those devices. Moving up from the AVS service, we move into our operational visibility service. And again, we have two options um, when it comes to OVS. We have OVS Connect, um, and again, that comes from, uh, for, is for customers that already have an MDM in place. And uh, this service we uh, just rolled out this past August. So again, a relatively new service for Zebra. Um, the operational uh, visibility or standard uh, visibility service um, this one, you do not have to have an MDM because that will be included um, as part of that service. And our, our OVS service has been in place um, probably since May of 2015. So again, about a year and a half, maybe um, not that old really. Um, with the OVS services, uh, you do have to have a 250 devices um, to obtain this service. Um, with that, you get access to Zebra's asset asset visibility platform dashboard, um, which really enables the device visibility. Um, you get consultancy support um, options. You also uh, get, uh, for your partner, you get access on behalf of your customers. Um, the Zebra One Care, uh, the Zebra, bleh, the OVS Connect um, comes with, uh, it connects to your customers on-premise or cloud MDM. Um, it comes with the operational dashboard um, and reports and a support connector and a uh, support for connector and portal. OVS standard includes the Zebra configured MDM tool, which is uh, SODI Mobi Control at the moment. Um, it has the OVS dashboards and reports, and you get full uh, platform support for uh, OVS standard. And then again, at the top of the pyramid, we have the Zebra One Care Premier. Um, what's important to note is that 
really a year and a half ago, um, the only service uh, that we had to offer um, was Premier. And so in the last, you know, uh, 16 months or so, you know, we've added quite a bit of um, services uh, available to our customers. Um, and I think that shows Zebra's commitment um, to uh, providing you with good quality products. All right, so let's move along. And I'm going to take you now to a demo of our operational, our asset visibility service. So this is our AVS product, um, and it's a dashboard. Um, AVS was really intended to be um, an at-a-glance uh, look at your entire device estate, okay? Um, so it's an as-of-day uh, portal, um, so it shows you where your devices are at that moment in time, or I should say really that day um, in time. And we have it set up so there are different cards representing different categories for each devices. And so you have um, a card that represents your total devices. So these are all of the devices that have been um, loaded into the portal. Um, you have a card that represents your active devices. So these are the act devices that are actively collecting data. Uh, you have a card that represents your out of contact devices. So these are devices that have stopped communicating um, with the portal. And so we break that into uh, one to 29 days um, as well as a 30 plus days out of contact. And we have devices that are currently in repair. So these are devices that are in the repair process. They've been sent in to have some work done. And this is where they are in the repair process. And then the last card we have is for spare pool, um, which if you were an advanced exchange customer and had a spare pool, um, you would see devices that are currently sitting in your spare pool here. The other element of this dashboard is the inventory down at the bottom here. So any card that I click on, whether it's active or 129 days uh, out of contact or devices in repair, you can see that the inventory below changes to reflect that particular category. The information is the same, however. So you will always see a serial number. Um, you'll see a friendly name. So this is a, a name for the device. It, it could be just the system generated one or it could be a custom one. Um, the first seen date, the last seen date, the model number, um, and the status of that particular device. Is it in repair? Um, is it out of contact? I can go back to... Okay. All right. We have some other views, though, not just our dashboard summary. We have a device locations uh, dashboard, and this is basically an interactive map that shows you where your devices are out in the field, and you can zoom in to see where they are. And this particular device is located in Boston. So I could see exactly where my devices are the last time they checked into uh, SOTI or into the um, the agent, the device agent. And then again, it reflects that device down below. So you can look at that. You could also view this for inactive devices as well. Um, these are on the other side here. We've got two inactive devices in England and two in Germany. The next dashboard that we have within AVS is the active devices. So these are devices that are currently um, reporting data. And um, you can see that there are different colors represented for the different states that they are in. It could be a normal state, it could be a warning state, could be a critical state. I mean, I'll go into this report in a little more detail in a few minutes. Again, you've got the inventory down below. So right now I'm looking at active devices and that's exactly what I see are all the active devices listed below. Um, at the top of every report, you'll have a, a headline um, that tells you, you know, basically what you're looking at. So we're looking at projected analytics for 27 active devices out of a 64 total. The last dashboard that I have is the inactive devices. So these are devices that have stopped making contact, um, that we've stopped collecting data for. And again, it's broken into categories. So you've got, you know, devices that have been out of contact for 1 to 29 days. Um, some that have been out of contact for 30 plus days. And you also see your devices that are in the repair process as well as spare pool. Um, and again, if I click on these, it should be showing us the inventory down at the bottom, um, but it is not currently. 
um, but this would change down at the bottom to reflect those devices that make up that category. Okay, so let's go back to our active devices. What's really cool about the active devices page is that this is really the nuts and bolts of this dashboard. Um, this is going to tell you where your devices are in the field, you know, what's going on for them, how are they operating. And we've got different uh, stages or states um, that you would want to be aware of. So if I click on normal, um, I get a green color code, which means everything's good. These are the ones that are performing uh, as we would expect them to be. If I click on warning, now I get a little more information. So uh, it gives you some information about types of issues that have been uh, noted based on the data that's collected. Um, so there's been eight disruptions, um, one battery issue, uh, three uh, application issues. Um, and what we feel and what categorizes this as a warning is that we feel that there is a 50% um, probability based on the data that we've collected on these devices that there may be an issue occurring um, or I should say a, a failure occurring um, in the next 30 days on these devices. So we classify them as a warning. If we move to critical, same kind of information again, disruptions, battery issue, application, um, but when it comes to critical, we feel that, again, based on the data we've collected, that there is a 70% chance of a failure happening to one of these devices um, within the next 30 days. And so you say to yourself, well, what can I do with this data then? Um, well, if you are to go down here uh, into your inventory and you click on the device, you get this individual device details page that pops up. And it gives you a few things. Um, it gives you, again, the serial number of that device, the friendly name that was given to it, when it was first seen, when it was last seen, um, the status of it. But now you get some suggested actions to be taken. So for this particular one, um, the action that's suggested is to check the chargers and the charging environment for faulty connections with abnormally high temperature. Provide training and other action to improve battery charging behavior. And then if you click on the drop down, you get a little more information. Well, you know, the reason that we're suggesting this is that we've seen a number of reboots and battery um, often charge less than 80%. So you get the rationale behind why we're making that suggestion. And really, that's the whole point of this um, visibility service is to let you get a jump on things before they become a problem, before that device fails and you have to send it uh, in for repair. Uh, there was a study done by VDC Research um, that said a, a device failure um, accounts for 80, um, 80 minutes of lost productivity. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to prevent that loss of productivity and if there's actions that you can take um, in advance that's going to prevent a failure, then why not take those? So that's what we're really suggesting here with um, AVS. A couple of other features of AVS um, at the top here, you get a, uh, a warning message. So um, AVS, you uh, load all of your contracts um, into this uh, portal, and then we are able to also then give you information about those contracts. So, you know, we're telling you right now that according to this alert at the top that you have two contracts expiring within uh, 90 days. And you get a red bar at the top here. Um, you can also see that contract information um, by going to the profile. And again, you get the same message here. You have two contracts expiring. Uh, within 90 days, it lists the two contracts out, tells you how many days are left on that contract, that service contract, as well as other contracts you may have. So red would be uh, expiring in 90 days, yellow or amber would be expiring within the next 180 days, and then everything after that we kind of say is, is in good shape right now. So you get that. Um, another feature of AVS is we have the concept of tags. And you can think of these as identifiers that you're able to assign to a particular device or devices. Um, there are system generated tags uh, that we have already put in place to classify devices, but you could also create your own. You could create them to represent uh, um, warehouses or distribution centers or work groups, um, and you could then assign devices to those tags so that now you can sort your inventory based on those tags, which is a, a really good feature. Okay, 
so that's it for AVS. Let me take you over to OVS, and uh, you'll see what that looks like. Okay, so OVS. So the main difference really between OVS and AVS, a couple of differences, is that um, number one is that whereas AVS is an as-of-day reporting system, um, OVS gives you as-of-day plus historical data, or it should say it, it builds data as you go on so that you can look back in time to see um, a week's worth of data, a month's worth of data, um, a quarter's worth of data. Um, in addition to that, um, what makes um, OVS so powerful is that it utilizes an MDM uh, to gather data from the device. So, you know, we're able to give you um, a much more robust um, uh, database of information um, and provide you much greater visibility into those devices. They're structured um, pretty different right now, um, the two services. Um, you have some uh, tools here at the top. You have a date picker that allows you to change uh, the dates that you're looking at and the date ranges that you're looking at. Um, you have uh, an icon here for user settings. So by clicking on uh, report settings, the admin for this um, account would be able to change the reports that are available to the users. Um, they can um, indicate reports that they want to appear on that main dashboard, um, which we call compelling events. Um, and you can set thresholds or alerts for those um, reports so that if we were looking at active devices and I wanted to see an alert for when my active devices drop below 60%, I can use this little slide here to make that 60% and then that tile for that report will turn red if it drops below 60%. So it's another way to give you an alert about what's going on with your devices. The dashboard page itself has some uh, great information on it. Down the left side you've got um, some quick view graphs uh, that kind of give you uh, a moment in time look at your uh, device. Um, inventory, you've got due back for repairs, so these are um, devices that tickets have been open for, RMAs have been open for, um, that have not yet come into our depot, and they'll tell you how many, you know, have been out there or overdue, uh, zero to five days, or six to ten days, um, and so forth. You have a case queue graph, so this is going to tell you about support tickets that have been opened and how long they've been open, um, and then we have a no trouble found graph. So um, one of the things that uh, customers like to view or understand is, you know, are we sending back devices that don't have a problem? Um, and this will give you a snapshot look at um, how the no trouble found is tracking for your devices. In the middle of the page, we have our compelling events. So these are reports that are available to you with OVS. Um, and this is just a quick way to access these reports. Um, we'll go into more detail about um, where we can access all of them, but this is just you know, the ones that are important to you uh, where you can access those. And then below that, we have a simple uh, total device status table below. Um, and it's going to show you the health and condition of your devices. So, um, you know, which devices are out of contact, which are active. Do I have some that have been lost and stolen um, that we've indicated? Uh, are there some in the, in the repair process? How many are due back for repair? If I had a spare pool, how many are in my spare pool? Um, you also see a breakdown by site. So how many devices, you know, are allocated uh, or reporting, I should say, for Japan? How many are reporting for Holtzville? And so forth. Okay. On the dashboard uh, navigation bar, um, this is where we're going to find all of our reports. And we break the reports into categories. So your operational reports, these are all the reports that come from the MDM um, or that are generated from the MDM. Um, and we break those into subcategories. So we have a subcategory for devices. So this is kind of, you know, what's the condition of my devices? Are they out of contact? Um, are they active? Um, do I have some that have been newly activated? Um, and then operational devices total. Moving into utilization, now these are a little more device specific and what's, you know, what's being reported from that particular uh, device or type of device. So we can look at unutilized devices and we can specify um, a category distinction as to uh, what I consider to be an unutilized device. You can look at um, the physical memory of your devices or the storage memory. Um, we have some uh, reports specific to WAN and WLAN. 
Um, and those reports are specific to how the devices are actually uh, functioning within the network. Um, and that's an important distinction that it doesn't report on the network itself. It reports on how the devices are working within those networks. And then we have a GPS location um, report similar to what you saw in, in AVS that will show you the location or the last location, I should say, of your devices in their operating environment. And then we go into battery um, reports. And so these are going to tell you device critical battery events, you know, how many have I had with those, what's the percentage of critical battery events I've had, um, device battery discharge rate, device battery level, um, device battery charges and charge time. Um, those are just a few of the things that you can see about the battery. If you click on the report side of things, or support side of things, um, these are going to go into the back-end systems that we have, the source systems that are going to show you the repair information um, about your devices or the support ticket information about your devices. And we have the queues, which represent uh, tickets that are currently open or being worked on. Um, and then we have resolution. So these are tickets that have been closed. So if we look at um, the operations, and let's take a look at the activity uh, active devices report. Um, you can see, again, we have a header here. It says um, nine devices checked in in the last at least once um, during this time period. Okay, so 34% of my um, devices have checked in. And then you get a three-table format of those devices. So you get it broken out by site. So of those nine devices, um, you know, where are they sitting? Um, you have uh, device models, so what's the breakdown of my devices based on model? Um, and then you have a, a, another breakdown, what is my devices per um, inventory for active devices? And then I could also click on a particular site, and that's going to filter my devices based on that particular site. I could also click on the individual um, device name, and this may take a minute here. But that's going to give me some individual uh, device information. Um, you're going to get some header information here about the device uh, name, the serial number, model, um, the OS it's operating on, what site it's coming from. Um, you're going to get some uh, graph information here depending on that particular device and what kind of uh, information that device puts out, whether it's critical events threshold or battery level or WAN signal. Um, you get a table down here with more information about the battery for that specific device or about the memory usage of that device, um, about the wireless capabilities of it. Um, and then on the right side here, you get device history. So this is going to show you, you know, all of the repair tickets that have been opened that device. So you can kind of see, hey, you know, there's a trend here. I'm always noticing uh, this particular problem coming up with this device. Or, wow, this has been in the shop a lot, five times or whatever that might be. Um, so you can see device history with that. Okay. Um, some other features that you have uh, within the action bar here is every report can be exported to Excel um, so that you can not only you know, view the information here um, in the web format, but you can also download that into Excel and you know, slice and dice it however you need to. Um, you have some search features depending where you are um, within the portal um, that you can search uh, through that particular report for individual devices or models or sites. Um, with the OVS, you also have a link here to um, the RMA portals, which is where you can create RMAs um, for a device if you wanted to. It's a link to those um, web pages, those RMA portals. Um, the last thing I guess I wanted to point it out is um, we talked about the alerts, um, and here's you know your example of the alerts. The red alerts are things that you've designated through that. Um, threshold setting as, well, it's critical. I want to know about, you know, any time my out-of-contact devices reach 65% or my active devices are at 35%. Um, so those are things that you would definitely want to pay attention to. You may sometimes see an amber um, code in here um, based on your threshold, and that's, you know, hey, it's something to take a look at, but it's not critical yet. Um, green obviously means things are working the way they should be, and it's within the thresholds that you set. Um, and then we have a blue indicator, which is really just informational. There are no alerts that can be set for those thresholds. Okay. And that is uh, all I have for AVS and OVS at this time. So, um, Adrian, I'll give it back okay. to you. Yes, thank you, John.
Greatly appreciate that. Uh, thanks again to Zebra for sponsoring the event. I think John and Rob, you did an awesome job of pulling the information together. Greatly appreciate that. And thank you ever so much for joining us. If you have any questions about what you, we discussed today, you can phone our 408 number or you can call our 888 number, which is up on the screen at the moment. You can email us at sales at redlinesolutions.com. If you go to our website, which is also on screen, you will see uh, the range of all the products that uh, Zebra have to offer and our solutions. And of course, you can follow us on our Twitter handle, which is uh, also there. So thanks a lot. I hope the rest of your day goes extremely well, and we will speak to you soon. Bye.